Hello friends, Tanya here for Trinity Stamps and today I am working with some Tropical Island Shakers. I've got a couple of cards here that we're going to create using the Island Cocktail Stamps and Dies that just came out in this release. Here is a panel that I die cut the cocktail glass out of the center and then stamped and heat embossed the pineapple slice all over the panel. I also lined up the cutout over another piece of cardstock and stamped the cocktail glass image in the same spot so that it will show through the die cut area on the front cover. And now I'm doing some ink blending. I believe this is, oh, is that mustard seed and wild honey? No, fos fossilized amber mustard seed and antique linen. It's three yellows anyway. And I'm creating a nice ombre look across the top of, or from the bottom to the top of this panel. I wanted this to be colors that are reminiscent of pineapples, but I didn't want to have to color every one of those pineapple slices. Next, I'm going to take these Copic markers to color the drink inside of this glass. I'm just carefully going around the borders or the edges of where the drink would fall inside the glass and I'm going to blend that into a pretty tropical drink. I think this reminds me of sunset and um, I've never had a drink that looked like this but it sure looks yummy. This is a really fun glass to color and the die set gives you a whole lot of options of how you might want to use this stamp set also. It's a little tough to blend some of those colors together, but that's okay. Now I'm going to do two different shaker cards in this video. They're both going to be full panel shaker cards in some way, shape, or form. I find that to be the easiest way to do a shaker card. And I'm showing you a couple of variations here. I'm test fitting this again to make sure that this looks good, that my blending is good. I'm going to add some clear Wink of Stella to the drink portion of this glass to give it a little extra shimmer and shine, which I think looks beautiful. And a little tip here for your clear Wink of Stella, if it's not flowing very well, I just dip it in my watercolor glass, my glass of water on my desk, to give it a little extra juice and that shimmer just lights right up. Now we have taken a piece of acetate, like clear stamp packaging, and I cut it to an inch wider than the panel that I have here. And then I took some double-sided tape and I lined the edges of the back of my panel. I'm going to remove three of those sides and fold over this acetate um, after I've centered it on the cardstock. We'll just fold up those, those three sides in preparation to put some shaker bits in. I do trim off the corners so they don't hang over because I wouldn't want them to show through on the front. We're gonna add some glass slipper confetti pieces here to this card. And even though it's showing through on the window, it's going to be okay. Um, the way we do this is going to really uh, make the shaker bits work really well. Now I've thought about putting some of my rhinestones or gems in a shaker for a long time and I'm finally taking that step and doing it. This is the brand new golden glass gems from Trinity Stamps and I added several of the largest of the golden glass pieces inside here and that kind of helps prop up the acetate so that it stays, uh, It everything shakes nice and loose inside. I'm just testing this to make sure that enough of the shaker bits will show when I shake the card. And now I'm just going to adhere that larger panel right on top of our shaker panel. And believe it or not, this works perfectly. It's not as bulky of a shaker card and it shakes even better than the foam strip style. I think this is permanently going to be my favorite way to create a shaker card. 
Let me know in the comments below how you feel about these, if you've given them a try, and if they've been working for you as well as they've been working for me. I'm going to adhere this entire piece to my A2 sized card base. I did make this a little smaller than the card base so that there would be a nice white border. You wouldn't have to do that, that's just something that I really enjoy doing. And now we're taking a couple of pieces that I had stamped and Copic colored and die cut from the same stamp set and adding those to the front of the card for a little extra interest. I'm also going to take a few of the golden glass embellishments and glue those to the front of the card. I think that brings a cohesiveness between the shaker bits and the front of the card and really adds a lot to the card. I am really liking these super glittery golden glass rhinestones. It's a clear rhinestone with like glitter right behind the back of the rhinestone. Next, we're going to use the Simply Sentimental birthday stamp set to add a greeting to the inside just using some VersaFine Claire ink. All right, on to card number two. I had stamped the strawberries on some pink cardstock and the lime slices on some green cardstock for the product close-up video and then I never made anything with them. Here I'm showing you how I made the strawberries and these are the colors I used for the strawberries and I apologize. I forgot to show everyone what colors I used for all of the remaining parts of this video. I apologize. But honestly, you could use whichever reds and green combinations you have in your stash and enjoy using together. I'm going to show you just these stro three strawberries. I'm not going to color all of them on video. I started with the darkest on the outer portions of the strawberries and then worked my way in to the lightest and I think they turned out great. I'm using this uh, negative space to make sure I have the right size or the right number of fruit pieces so that it'll fill this glass when I die cut it. And here I am making a pile of limes. I'm using, I think, four shades of green here to make my lime slices. I think I started doing four and then weaned it down to three different colors. Just slim, simply coloring the rind, the darkest color, and then shading in the, the fleshy part on the inside for um, a nice gradient color throughout each of these limes. There are three lime slice stamps in the set. I only used two in this and in some of the t versions that I've colored I've added little dots on the rinds or on the peel and that looks really cool too. I just didn't want to put that kind of effort into it. Now I have that inside glass die and I've die cut all of these fun glasses. Now tell me that doesn't look amazingly luscious. I love the way these turned out. I took the lightest color for each of these and I colored in the liquid around the fruit. I'm using the zero marker, the colorless blender, to sh um, make that blend out and fade out to the color of the card stuck near the top of the cards or the, the glasses also. Now we're going to take these pieces and I'm going to add a little bit of the clear Wink of Stella to these also. I'm really liking the, sh the shimmery stuff again. I'm on a shimmery phase. We're just going to add that all over this cardstock to add extra shimmer and shine. I think that helps with the glass look of that. For some reason, my clear Wink of Stella picked up some of the marker color and I just cleaned it off on a strip of cardstock to make sure that I didn't transfer pink to the green. <laughs> I'm checking to see if these are dry yet. This is the difference between the shimmered one and the not shimmered one. And here's the lime shimmer and not shimmer. Next, we're going to pull out the Friendship Stamp and Die Set. I think this is adorable. For anyone who is into pirates or sailing or cruising, someone who's a deep sea fisherman or just likes the nautical theme type things. Here we've got uh, the biggest one. This is a big cruise ship. My family really enjoys cruising. And just showing my finished card to my husband 
made him think about vacation. So I'm going to lay this ship on my panel to kind of guess where I want my water lines to be. And I'm going to start ink blending this five by seven panel of light blue cardstock. I'm using Salty Ocean and Salvage Patina to create a ocean gradient up the front of this panel. It will ultimately get trimmed down, but there's going to be some fun going on here. I'm blending that Salvage Patina out into the light blue, and I am coming back and adding a little darker Salty Ocean on the bottom and blending that again. We're going to pull out the Island Oasis cutout die, and I'm going to center that towards the top of this card base or this panel. And I'm gonna tack it down with a little bit of low tech tape here. And I'm going to die cut that and also use one of the modern embossed A7 stack dies. This cuts it down to four and a half by six and a half inches. And I am going to layer that over a piece of cardstock that I um, had created using my gel press with the Nouveau Shimmer Powders and some clear acrylic base. It's like a, it's like paste that you would use to create um, glitter paste or, or just texture. And it's a translucent one. And I had put that on my gel press plate and tapped on some shimmer powder and picked it up with a piece of cardstock. Next, I am adding some color to those palm trees on the die cut for the Island Oasis cutout die. I did green for the palm or for the leaves and I'm doing a brown for the trunk. Nothing fancy here, just putting the color down over this colored cardstock. And this just shows how well you can color right over the top of colored cardstock, both with ink blending and with Copic markers. Don't feel like you're limited to exactly the color of your cardstock. Next, we're going to, I want to add some sand to the bottom of this island. And I took a circle die from the Modern Emboss Circle Stack. And I found one that's bigger than the cutout die. So I could cut out the bottom portion and create this <clears throat> sandy beach. I'm going to take some ink on three juicy embossing ink and put that all over this piece. And I pulled out the sand embossing powder. This is from Hero Arts. It is uh, amazing. This came in a kit um, a, a year or two ago and it really does make the perfect sand. I'm just going to heat this up until it's smooth and shiny. And you have to be careful with this embossing powder because it will, the larger pieces will blow right off if you're not careful enough. And that's what it looks like when it's done. Be careful not to touch it too soon. <laughs> so I'm going to create my full panel shaker here, but we're going to adapt this a little bit. I measured about how far down that cutout window goes and I put a piece of double-sided tape on the front of the card that's or on the front of this panel and I am doing the same with the like I did with the other one I put the double-sided tape on the four edges on the back of the panel taking my cardstock my uh, acrylic piece panel and putting that over the top and I forgot to take the release paper off the front of the card but this works too and you don't accidentally stick it to the wrong parts now this way we have a pocket in our panel that is going to hold our shaker bits these are the soapy bubbles confetti and I think they are just perfect they pick up some of the pinks and purples and all those luscious colors that are perfect behind for like seashell look behind our little island oasis here. And since this is a full panel shaker card, it doesn't all just sit at the bottom. It kind of stays scattered throughout that pocket. I've adhered this to the back of our die cut, or our, excuse me, our front panel. And now I'm going to glue this to a five by seven card base, just using liquid glue. And this looks pretty, but we're gonna add a bunch of stuff to the front. 
I get that well adhered and you can see the shaker bits rest in view. And then when you shake them, they kind of stay in place behind that. It might partly be due to the textured quality of the gel press print that I made, but I think it has more to do with the fact that it's a pocket, more of a pocket shaker card. We're going to adhere our little sandy beach right on there, and then I'm going to find my exact placement for our cruise ship. And I'm going to adhere our colored and cut out piece of the drink to a vellum die cut of the entire cocktail glass. So we're going to put our drink in the glass, and I'll put a heavyweight block on top of that to make sure that dries without warping. I do take an extra piece of cardstock and die cut the cruise ship piece again and add that to the back for a little extra height and stability and glue that to the front of our card. And our glass is going to be the closest thing to us. I'm going to add a little bit of coaster blank behind that and pop that up above all of the things. I'm also going to take a couple of sentiments from the friendship stamp set. We've got um, ship, ship, hooray, and let's celebrate. I think that will work for lots of different occasions, including birthdays, just or just for the heck of it kind of cards. I really love the variety of sentiments and punny sentiments in this stamp set. So cute. I am adding a little layer of uh, clear embossing powder to the front of those, and I die cut those with the coordinating dies love that. I say it over and over again. One of my favorite things is when my sentiments have coordinating dies. It just makes things so much easier and faster to create your cards. I don't have to go looking through my stash for something that will be the right size to die cut my sentiments. Just adding a little bit of coaster blank slivers behind those to make those stand up. There is a lot of dimension on this card, but it doesn't look like a towering dimensional card. That's what I love about this method of shaker card. We'll just add those. This is a kind of a bottom heavy card. The Most of the details are on the bottom, but I really wanted there to be a lovely sky above all of this. I'm adding a little bit of... This is a Sakura Jelly Roll pen in the clear, and I'm adding that to the windows because the ship has to have some shimmer too. Next, I'm taking that second drink portion that I colored earlier, and I'm adding that to another vellum cocktail glass, and we're going to glue that to the inside of the card because I needed to decorate the inside of the card also. So there's a close-up of the inside of our card and the front of our card, giving it a good shake card number two. Those are the two cards I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in that description box below which, or in the comments below, which of these cards you enjoyed the most. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please take a moment to do that now. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in any of the product that I use today, of course, it is in that description box below for you. Until next time, bye-bye.